<coughs> start so in this case so this is this is the you know, attached to this plate with a welded joint here at a and b and if the welded b has a thicker fillet than that of at a then what is the load carrying capacity of a p of the this joint how this load carrying capacity will vary here so how to decide the load carrying capacity of this you know welded joints that is that can be calculated only by only by knowing the stresses resisting stresses at the point a and as well as at the point b so in the general case what happened if i redraw the diagram in this manner i cut this you know uh, this welded joint section like this by using the cutting plane axis and if i look from this side then it would look like this and this is the cross section of the welded joint at the b and this is the cross section of welded joint at this say you know point a so and here in the general case for example in the initial case if i consider that this would two points a and b are welded with the same amount of thickness then these cross section areas are same here in this case and uh, what is the center of gravity of these uh, you know two welded areas that is exactly in between these two a and b cross sections so and uh, here in this case what happening this p is uh, passing through the point g so when the p is passing through this point g this is the p here and whenever we have a welded joints like this we have a two types of stresses tau 1 and tau 2 are shear stresses here and uh, what is the primary shear stress here the primary shear stress is due to the direct load direct applied load that is the p here and generally this is a uh, simply the force divided by the area of the cross section because here the shearing area is this one if you cut if you cut with this you know cutting plane then this is the shearing area and i assume this has the bar this has the bar even if i assume this has a circular rod even in that case also these two cross section would be equal but for the sake of convenience i have assumed this has a bar the rectangular bar so that uh, its cross section would be like this and uh, here how can you find out the primary shear stress that is simply force applied force divided by area of the cross section if it is at the point b then it's a area of cross section of the point b so this is a a and how to calculate the secondary shear stress so the secondary shear stress is developed due to the you know moment applied because of this you know uh, applied force stop start and the secondary shear stress is due to the moment produced by the applied force why because in this case this force is passing through the center of gravity but if the force is not passing through the center of gravity but instead if it is passing like this then there would be some you know uh, eccentricity between these two because of this eccentricity you no know, there would be some moment like this but here in this case since this is passing through the center of gravity there won't be any you know moment developed in the given structure so when there is no moment developed in the given structure then automatically the secondary shear stress would be become zero right because here there is no m m becomes zero when there is no m automatically secondary shear stress is zero and if you compare primary and secondary why we are calling this as a primary and this as a secondary because in comparison to the primary shear stress the magnitude of the secondary shear stress is generally very low in the question he mentioned that thicker fillets they have used thicker well fillets at the point b then what happens the load carrying capacity here and if i go back again here in this case the stress developed the shear stress developed at the a and as well as at the b are equal here in this in this case why because the distance between g from a and b is equal and also tau 1 that is the shear stress primary shear stress because of the direct force also equal so that the maximum resistance that can be offered at these welded sections are equal here now if i take the thicker fillets so here again we have two cases so in the case one 
so if the fillet if the fillet is in this direction that means there is no change in the cross section of the brick there is no change no change here if i apply in this direction if i apply fillet in this direction so in that case what happens again i will cut this one like this using the cutting plane and if i draw this front view again it would exactly look like this and here again we have a this one uh, cross section of the b and cross section of the a both are equal here when the cross section of a and the cross section of b equal then if i calculate the center of gravity of these two welded sections then again we will get the center of gravity here only and when you get the center of gravity here again the force is passing through this point and there won't be any moment developed by this applied force then again we are getting the similar similar shear stresses primary shear stress and again secondary shear stress is become zero here so in this case what happening so the load carrying capacity of the p is not changing because this is exactly the case whichever the case one is exactly equal to the initial case where the same thickness of the you know uh, welded fillet so if that is the case what is the answer here answer is c here so in the case to what happened we increase the fillet not in this direction but in the lateral direction that means the area of cross section of the uh, you know uh, well at b has increased that means here we increase like this instead of increasing in this direction we increase this uh, welding like this so when we increase welding like this and if i cut cut this one cross sections well, welded sections using the cutting plane then how it look like this so it look like this so this cross section of a remains constant as like in the previous case so this would be like this but here this cross section is increased here so this is how it became in this case when i cut this uh, plane so here this cross section is different and this cross section is different and uh, when these two cross sections are different and uh, moreover in this case this cross section is more so what happens when this cross section is more automatically the center of gravity here shift towards the this bigger cross section so instead of having here it become here so this is the g and let's say this is the bow this is the geometrical center but p p is passing through this direction but job this center of gravity is here because of this you know eccentricity here we have a momentum also so this can be written as a p plus a moment so moment is a acting like this here because actually p is here but g is here so it is a turning like this so in this case we have a primary and as well as a secondary forces if the given case is like this then these stresses are the shear stresses produced at the a and b are no longer same but uh, it will vary so how they will vary we need to find out this one so for example if i take at the point a so for example at the point a what happens what is the primary shear stress primary shear stress is a uh, that is a tau 1 a equal to force applied divided by simply cross section so here cross section is not changing so this is uh, as like in the previous case and what is the secondary shear stress here so secondary shear stress how to calculate the secondary shear stress that is a moment into r into j so here j is the you now um, polar moment of inertia of these two about the center of gravity so we need to consider this weld and as well as this weld while calculating the j so that we have already seen when we are dealing with the you know welded joints examples on the welded joints so we know how to calculate this one j and what is the r here what is the r here so from this point we will take the maximum distance point so if i take maximum distance point this one 
maximum is either this one or uh, this point so either this two point either this point or this point is a very you know maximum distance from this center of gravity so i will take any one of these two and uh, that is and uh, if i join this point with the g this is called as a r let's say this is r1 here so r1 so by knowing r1 and j and what is the m m equal to here p applied force into eccentricity e so by knowing all this we can calculate so calculate to you know uh, secondary shear stress and uh, if you have a angle between these two then we know how to calculate the how to calculate the resultant so for example tau a equal to square root of tau 1 square plus so tau 2 square plus 2 tau 1 tau 2 cos theta so what is the cos theta here theta is the angle between this uh, you know uh, primary and uh, secondary force so in the ideal case let's say the if theta is the zero then what happens this is a tau 1 plus a tau 2 and uh, here what we are calculating is maximum maximum shear stress so what could be the maximum shear stress that means what is the maximum resisting stress that is uh, acting at the section a so that uh, it can withstand the applied force so whatever we calculate you know here should be maximum so this is the maximum here so in whenever we say maximum let's say theta equal to 0 then we will get simply tau 1 plus tau 2 that means here we are adding some positive value to the tau 1 but uh, if i take the previous case there also the tau 1 is exactly equal to the p by a but here in this case we are extra adding the tau 2 that means the stress or the resisting stress at the point or section A is increasing here. Here it is increasing. But what happens at the point B? So if I take a point B here, I will take point B here. So here again we need to calculate the first tau 1 primary shear stress. What is the primary shear stress here? P by area of cross section of the B. But here cross section of the B is a increases so when it is increased this uh, tau 1 decreases in compared to the previous case so if i compare with the previous case the tau 1 value decreased at the cross section b and again we can calculate the tau 2 by using the same formula here and what is here if i write this one m r 2 by j what is the r2 here again we need to calculate the farthest point on the cross section b to the g if i can if i join these two then this is the r2 and uh, since we already know that primary shear stress is much more than the secondary shear stress and this already decreased and if I take the double the amount of the cross section from the previous case, this almost half, if almost half. And uh, when I calculate the resultant shear stress, what happens? That is maximum resultant shear stress at the point B. Then it's again the same formula. And if I put theta equal to zero, then it will become tau one plus tau two. And uh, even though we have uh, some positive value adding to the tau 1, but tau 1 itself is you know became off. That means if I compare with the previous case, it became you know less than the previous case. That means the resisting stress at the cross section B became less than the resisting stress at the same cross section when I consider the previous case or the case 1. Resisting stress decreased here at the cross section B. That means the load carrying capacity of this uh, joint reduced here in this case. So what happened if the if you consider case 2 according to case 2 the load carrying capacity of the joint will be decreased. So based on these two cases we need to choose the correct answer.